Hi, good afternoon. I'm just sort of settling in right now. Um, I know I just started this live video, so it usually takes like a minute for people to sort of click in, or if you see that notification, uh, tap on that and uh, join us here for, um, welcome. We are here today with Studio Central. Uh, this is our Studio Central's uh, daily art demonstration. Um, as you can see, we are not in Studio Central right now. Um, we are all here in Winnipeg, currently in lockdown. So Studio Central is closed for the time being. So in its place, every day at one o'clock, um, we are doing our daily art demonstration, which would normally be at Studio Central. Um, but um, for the time being, this is, we're sort of navigating um, all these new regulations, but we still wanna bring you uh, the same content that we normally would. Um, so just a little bit of background, um, if you're not familiar, uh, Studio Central um, is uh, a part of Artbeat Studio, and we are a not-for-profit registered charity uh, who believe in uh, the power of art, um, the, the healing power of creativity um, as we all navigate mental wellness, uh, mental health, whatever part of life that we, where, wherever we're at, we know that art is a place that can be centering and a beautiful place of self-expression. So um, I am here, my name is James. I'm doing a art demonstration um, and it's called Winter Landscapes in Chalk Pastel. Uh, so I guess I just wanna preface this by saying that I have done chalk pastels before, but I'm still very new to this medium. Uh, my main medium as an artist is acrylic painting um, and video work. So, you know, I can do that with the back of my hand. But chalk pastels, there is something, um, there's a bit, un there's a, that unknown factor um, when I approach this medium. So I do have uh, a template of what we're going to be doing in winter landscapes. But um, please bear with me <laughs> if my style seems like, I don't know, maybe not as pro as someone else who understands chalk pastels. Um, it's fun to be a beginner. Um, it's fun not to be scared to try something new. Um, so if you haven't tried chalk pastels before, come along with me today and <laughs> we'll see what we can, uh, what we can turn out. Um, uh, just as a side note, we're here actually at my art studio in the Exchange District. Um, it's a shared space and it's a, got some beautiful views. So I just want to thank you uh, for being here today and tuning in. I can see we have a couple of people watching, so that's great. So I'm just going to adjust this because I think it's a little bit high. So um, I hope everyone's having a good day, by the way. I think I always start everything off by saying when you start to do art, it's good to have, especially on a chilly day, um, a nice warm drink. So I have a coffee here that I got from Parlor Coffee uh, down in the exchange. Um, things are a lot different with COVID. A lot of places are being forced to close. So I just want to say if you have the opportunity, um, support local, get some coffee from someone that you know, um, and let's start making some art. Uh, Okay, so I'm just sort of setting myself up right now. Um, I'll adjust this so you can actually see what I'm doing here, but I'm just sort of yammering on while I, <clears throat> while I prep the area. So again, chalk pastels, winter landscapes. Um, I practiced a little bit with it. It's pretty cool. Um, I used it on white paper. Um, so I'll show you for supplies. You can use, this is, you can see just a regular sketchbook. Um, it's nine by 12. Um, this is good for anything with charcoal, um, crayon, pastel, pencil, ink. So you can see it's got kind of like, it's smooth, but there's like a, just a little bit of texture to it. And I know when you work with pastels, it's nice to have a little bit of texture on the paper because that will sort of grab um, that chalk pastel and it'll be nice. It'll, it holds on the paper nicer when it has a little bit of texture to it. 
Um, so I have this. I also have, um, someone had sent me a message saying, um, oh, if you're working with chalk pastels and it's winter, uh, highly recommend working with black paper. So um, when I was originally practicing this, um, I was only using the white paper. Um, so I found some black paper and just to sort of uh, expand on the idea of being a beginner and it's okay to be a beginner when you approach a new medium, I have not used any chalk pastels on black paper um, before. So I thought it'd be fun to sort of show you what I did with the white paper. Um, that's easy enough to get. Um, and then once I'm done that, we're gonna do a little bit, little bit of work on black paper, but I'm going in blind. So I've never seen the, I'm, I'm not, I don't even know what kind of effect we're, we're gonna get with this. So uh, part one, white paper, part two, black paper. So you gotta stick around the whole, through the whole thing to actually see me do this with the black paper today. Um, so that's paper, right? And then we're, we also need to have chalk pastels. So you can see that I have been using these. Um, just some nice, beautiful, it's a nice color palette. Um, if you've worked with chalk pastels, you know that sort of, it's got a nice feel to it, especially when it hits the paper, because we're gonna be doing a lot of blending on the paper. That's a big component to chalk pastels. Um, these chalk pastels are, you might be familiar with them, but I'll show you, I'm not sure if you can see that. Jack Rikison, Richeson, uh, square pastels. Uh, you can get them from, you can get pastels from uh, a lot of places. Like these are actually from uh, we're a gift, but I know that they're from uh, Artist Emporium. Uh, that's a local business. If you're not familiar, it's um, off of St. James. I think it's north on St. James, like past Costco. Um, and then also Dollarama. Dollarama carries uh, chalk pastels as well. So there's a whole myriad of places you can uh, find this to work with. So. And that's all you need. You need paper, you need pastels, and you're gonna be using a lot of your fingertips today to blend. So be prepared when you work with pastels, um, your fingers get messy, you can't avoid it. But uh, <laughs> what I like to do is I have a little bit of paper towel. So if you're like, if I'm blending something that's a darker color, my fingers are gonna end up being like uh, blue. So say the color is blue, you can just, sort of wipe it off with a paper towel and then you can kind of keep going. Um, I used to sort of keep um, like just a little dish of water to dip my fingers in to clean them off. Like you can do that, but I just found that really slowed up the process. But if I just have a little bit of paper towel to wipe my fingers off um, in between blending, if you want, if your fingers are very much like have a lot of pastel in them, then I would recommend that. Um, Cause yeah, using like a little dish of water just sort of slowed everything up, you know, cause you gotta wait for your fingers to dry and that whole shebang. So um, yeah, so that's the basic supplies. So we will get into the demo. Um, okay, so I have a few, few options to work with. I think um, I'll show you what I did. So we're gonna start with a piece of white paper and I'm going to adjust this camera so now it's you can see what I'm doing okay. ooh, have that hot. Marissa says ooh have that hot beverage yes like for real like you need I think Art and a beverage go hand in hand. There's just something so, for my practice, I always need to have a beverage in my hand. <laughs> uh, okay. So I have an apron on as well. You can see this. Again, art can be a little bit messy. If you're wearing clothing that you don't wanna get dirty, I'd highly recommend getting an apron. This is literally just a kitchen apron 
Um, it doesn't have to be some fancy like artist apron. It's just something to cover the clothing. Then I have my pastels here. And I have some of my examples laid out. So um, what can we start with? Let's start with something with some color. So that's something I did. I worked on this the other day. So um, for the winter landscape with the white paper, when you use a white pastel, I'm just covering this whole, the whole piece of paper in this white pastel, but you can see that nothing's showing up, right? You can kind of see, like right now you can see from the light, you can see there's a bit of texture from the pastel beyond here. But when I was playing with this the other day, other day I was like, well, how can I actually create the idea of snow? Um, so for this, what I want to do is I want to, for a winter landscape, um, I'm going to use a little bit of blue. So blue is going to sort of create a tone in this white and it's going to give that sort of snowy effect. So first step or second step, I've covered this in white. I'm going to use a little bit of blue and I'm going to create a horizon line. So horizon line, when you're looking, I'm, I'm also doing it um, vertically like that. So you can see a horizon line. I'm going to put uh, right here. So about almost halfway up the paper, just below, I would say. And I'm just going to do sort of a darker blue across the horizon line that sort of, it's, this represents the sky. So we're just sort of trying to create that blue of the sky. So that's just sort of lightly, I've just put a light layer of that blue. You can see that there. Um, and then again, you use your fingers to blend. So now I just start to lightly, I'm, I use circular motions. You can see what I'm doing with my hand. So I'm just using circular motions. And what it's doing, it's really, like the, the pastel already would blend on its own. But because I put a layer of white, the first layer on the paper is white, that blue is actually blending easier into the paper. Okay. <clears throat> so already with this blue, the way it's blending, so this is sort of like a, a I'm using, uh, you can, it looks almost like a darker, kind of like a darker blue. So you don't want to use too much. That's why I just put a light layer down and it's blending so well. So I'll just take you through those steps. So you're, this blue blended with the white is already getting like this kind of cool, like that feels like winter. Like, does that not feel like winter? It feels chilly. <laughs> so now I have this light blue what i want to create is the sky so i'm trying to create a bit of a winter sky so what i want to do is mm, i'm going to use a bit of this purple um, so when i think about winter and when i think about skies like the first color that we sort of think about is white, right? Like winter is white. And that's, you know, that's true. But there's also, I find with winter on those cold evenings, um, when you're looking out, the sky can have such a very unique, uh, unique colors and here, for my winter sky right now, I am using a little bit of this magenta color. So now I'm gonna blend this in. So I'm gonna blend this in here and then blend it into the blue. So again, I'm just using my fingers.
And when I'm doing this, I'm also using very, I'm being very light with the pastel. I'm not being, you know, I'm not pressing heavy. There's, we're, we want to get a softness. So, and to get that softness, just using very, very light strokes of color onto here. And it just blends really nicely into, uh, into this paper, so. So now what I want to do is, because we've used this blue here, I'm kind of blending this into here. I'm just creating the base. So I'm going to bring more blue around up to here. Again, very, very, very light. Very light. And I'm using my fingers to blend. So using the blue and this like magenta color, what you're creating, I'm trying to create a gradient. So just think of winter and that cold winter like sky when you look at it and you see that sort of gradient from that hard blue into that sort of pinky purpleness. Um, so for the top, I am gonna use a little bit of a lighter blue. So I've got this, you can kind of see that color there. So first blue that I used was that dark one, and now I'm using this one, which is way more, um, almost like violet. So I'm gonna be using this again more in, for another picture. So I'm just putting just a light, just a very light line, or like a, some of this lighter blue at the top. And what I wanna do is I wanna blend again into that. So I want to bring this magenta up a bit more. So we started with the dark blue where you use the magenta and now we've got this really light blue at the top. So it's creating that gradient between the blues and that magenta. It's a really nice sort of uh, balance between the three colors. So as you're, as you're working with your chalk pastels, um, I just want to say like what I'm doing is uh, I want you to be able to follow along, but I also want you to be able to make your own choices on the paper. So if you follow along, it's not about like you have to exactly do what I'm doing, but if to glean anything from the process that I'm doing right now for your own practice, um, feel free to press darker with your pastels if you want to. Feel free to use a different color other than blue and this magenta color. I want, art is definitely about who you are and what you bring to the paper, so. I hope I'm just giving you a bit of a framework with how to work with um, a medium that you may not be familiar with. So let's see what we got right now. So, so far we have this. So again, we're getting like a very like sort of the cold winter sky vibes right now. I'm liking this. I'm liking this vibe right now. That looks really cool. I actually love that. And like these sort of, ooh, that's nice too. Nice. Okay. So we're good. We're good. Uh, next. So what I think I want to do is um, this bottom part. So this is the sky, right? Top part that we've been working on, that's the sky. Now this is actually like the land. This is the snow. So yeah, snow is white. Cool. But um, for this, I want to bring a bit of texture to it. I want to create that sense. What can I do to make it feel cold, chilly? Winter is cold, winter is chilly. So how can I translate that physical feeling that we have when we are in winter onto this paper? So what I'm going to do is use that darker blue. So now this will require really, really light light application of the pastel. So do, don't press heavy. Um, 
we're gonna be just doing very, very light strokes, like uh, parallel strokes. So the sky is like, you know, very vertical, but this we wanna kind of just put a light brush of pastel, this blue color, very, very light. You do not, for this, like you don't wanna be heavy because we're trying to create this effect of snoo. So you can see I've done very, see, it's very noticeable, hardly noticeable. Um, so now you blend it. So just very lightly. See, now I'm doing sort of back and forth. Instead of circular, I'm doing back and forth. Again, just the direction of like the land, the ground. And what that blue with the white creates, it just creates a really sort of snow vibe. I just think one, a cold, a very cool color, a classically cool color is blue. So that really emphasizes the fact that this is a winter landscape. There's another element that we're gonna be adding in the center, which will just like reaffirm that. But you can see with the blending, it just sort of creates that sense. So now when you pull back, you can see like this, like this vibe right now, this is like very wintry. And I've just added a, just those hints of blue to the white. Um, so I want to add, um, so I think I want to make the sky a bit darker. So we're going to go back to this horizon line. I'm going back to this horizon line and I'm going to just put a heavier, it's going to be a little bit heavier with that same dark blue. And I'm just going to do this heavy line across the horizon. And... And then I'm going to blend it. So again, I find on the horizon line, I'm doing a bit more of a circular, circular movement with my fingers to blend it. I want to bring... And I'm just looking, I like the, I like the effect of the magenta. I don't think I want to add more magenta at all, but if you feel like you want to add more of that sort of magenta color here, then feel free to do that. But um, I think for mine, I like what we got going on. And always like, remember like chalk pastels, like just, Feel that flow, like it's such, a, there's such a physicality to all art. All art has a physicality, but I feel like there's just something uh, so cool and like really uh, back to basics with pastels. Cause you know, it reminds me of who remembers finger painting? Like, hi, kindergarten, I, I was there and we did it and it was fun. So this is sort of like that same vibe, like I'm actually on the paper with my hands and my fingers are dictating um, what I'm creating. And I think that that's really such a cool thing. So, uh, okay, so I'll show you what I got. So this is, I've added more of that blue. Hi, isn't that great? Like, look at that. That like totally, I'm getting a winter vibe right now. Um, so cool. Winter landscapes and chalk pastels. Yes, actually living up to the title of the demo. <laughs> um, okay, so what I want to do now is um, I've got the sky. I've got, I'm going to be playing more with the texture and the snow. But what I want to do is I'm going to add um, a tree component. So we're going to be adding, I'm going to need the color. Uh, brown. Yeah, brown. So we're going to be using this darker stick of brown for the trunks, for the trees. And then we're going to be actually using white. So this white, you're just going to be using these two colors to create the trees. And once I get into it, you'll see kind of what's going on. <clears throat> so I want to keep these trees sort of in the center. So 
I'll show you what I mean. I'll do a couple and then I'll show you. But um, this is... I'll just show you what I'm starting with. So you can see I've got those trees. So you want them to sort of be closer to the horizon, but you do want them to be not on the horizon. You want them to be just sort of just below that horizon. So what you're doing, we're creating this sort of a mini forest, but it's also giving depth to that horizon line. So you're kind of seeing um, that depth. It's a, a nice sort of way to engage the perception on the paper, the perspective. Okay, so. So for these trees, they're, they can, I'm just using the corner. This is a square pastel. So if you have a round pastel, um, try to use the edge, like I'm using the corner. So it's like a sharper corner you can see, right? So I'm kind of using that corner, the sharper point, to create these trees. And they're sort of, they're varying in size. Like here's a long one, here's a short one. And I just want to do it right in the center. So this is, you know, it's a winter landscape. It's a bit of an abstract. That's kind of my jam. So I definitely am bringing a part of who I am creatively to this piece that we're working on. So that's a, that's an, the extension of me is this is sort of more of an abstract landscape. Um, okay, so I've got some smaller ones. There we go. Let's just make a couple longer. So these trees are definitely in the distance, so that's why they're smaller and thinner. So now you can see. There you go. Marissa says, so dreamy. Yeah, isn't it? I think winter itself is so dreamy. Um, I'll have a... I'll talk more about winter when I'm done this, because I love winter. So now we're using the white. So I put those little tree, the tree things. So what I'm going to do is just use white. I'm just going to like sort of create little flecks all around it to give, to show like it's a tree, but it's like covered in snow. So even though that will just emphasize the winter quality to the picture. So I'll show you, I mean, I'll, I'll start and then I'll show you. So I'm going to go like this. Oh yeah, that's cool. So again, not looking for realism. This is not realistic in any way, shape, or form. So, so I'll show you what I'm doing. So now you can see, see those little white flecks? So I'm just gonna keep putting those white flecks all over these tree trunks. And that's to create the idea of a tree that's covered in snow. Oops. So I actually have to take a minute to use paper towel and just wipe my hands off. Because what I just did was I accidentally had dark chalk pastel on my finger and I went to do some work and I now have a dark swipe of color here. So um, that shouldn't happen. And again, that's that's gonna happen. Like little mess ups are gonna happen, but just with pastel, just wipe your hands off and that helps. And that's an easy mistake to fix. So anyways, just to... Okay, so I'm just putting these white, building my trees right now. Building the trees. Lumberjack. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we are So I just want to extend my tree trunks a little bit for a couple of them. And again, this is like, as you're doing this, um, switch it up however you want to switch it up. Okay, 
so so I'm actually putting some lines of the trees to pop through so you can kind of see that effect that I'm getting I think I want to get more white I want to get them to have more of a tree vibe so let's add some more white Nice. Okay, so basically, so that's, I think my trees look pretty good. I like that kind of vibe. Let's see. I'm just gonna hold it up. It's always good to like step back and look at your work. Yeah, I think the idea is we're trying to create a winter landscape. So this is kind of like, I think I wanna get more white on those trees, yeah. And I'm just sort of going in with my fingertip just to give it a little, just the slightest bit of a blend. Um, uh, Marissa had mentioned in a comment that it's dreamy. And I think that's a really good word to describe chalk pastels. I think you get that flow. There's, I hear that word a lot and I think it's a beautiful word but you get that flow with pastels, you know, that movement you can really create. Um, so now that I have that, I wanna to return to this bottom part, the landscape, and what I wanna do is add a bit more blue. I wanna add a bit more texture to the land. Okay, so I'm gonna kinda of do just a couple of lines here. Again, just blending that. Line that up as well. And just sort of adding more blue to give texture to this sort of snow, the snow. Look at that, beautiful. I feel like, again, blue just really emphasizes the the fact that it is snow, right? Because again, we think snow is like traditionally white. Yes, it is white, but how do we as artists create that density, that sort of texture and tone that is snow? And I think blue is a great color to create that. So again, I'm just sort of use your eye and go to the paper and wherever you feel you want to add a bit more blue to create a bit more texture. And once I'm done this, I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> I used a bit of my blue to color up, cover up that little, um, my little boo-boo from earlier. That's part one. This is my part one winter landscape. So I'm just gonna flip the phone so you can check this out. And then Okay, so just to review what we did, I used to create a winter landscape. What I did was step one, I covered this white paper in white pastel and then I began working from the horizon line with this darker blue which blended into this magenta and then I used a very very light almost violet color at the top and we created a gradient in the sky um, you sort of use again your own interpretation I added a bit more um, color to the sky to create that sort of flow you can kind of see 
the way the colors kind of blend pastel just a beautiful beautiful color and then the snow for the ground you can see i added that blue and we blended it into there so you can kind of see it gives you the effect of snow so you can really see like oh yeah this is snow like there's no doubt that this is snow um, for that winter landscape and then i just added some trees just a little subject matter in the distance um, to create um, that perspective right so you can kind of see the horizon the distance and you can now understand that distance because you see these trees so it's sort of a way to sort of play with um when people look at it, they understand that there's a depth to your picture now. Uh, yeah, and so that's, the trees are just brown and white. And I used white to emphasize the fact that they're snow covered trees. So that is my winter landscape. So that's part one. And then part two. Mm, mm, we're gonna be using some black paper. And just to reiterate, I have never worked with this paper ever in my entire life. So um, it's probably, I'm probably going to mess it up. So let's see what happens. Okay, so bear with me while I set this up. So I'm going to switch it out. So we worked with white paper first, and now we are going to work with... <sighs> black paper this is pretty big so I have two options I have like a really small version or I have a big version so I don't know um, Marissa what should I do <laughs> if you're watching <laughs> should I do big or should I do small I don't know <laughs> I'm just like really like genuinely concerned I'm gonna mess this up <laughs> so let's do um, uh, okay, I'm gonna go go big or go home. I think that's a saying, right? I don't know. <laughs> uh, and this is genuine laughter. <laughs> so we're putting the white to rest. Here we go, over here. And I've got <clears throat> the bigger piece. <laughs> Marissa says go big. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> So I'm gonna do what, exactly what I did before. So the person who sent me this message, um, this is also a beautiful thing about uh, social media and the online community. Um, if you have the opportunity to connect with people online, um, I think it can be a really, um, a really great way to improve on your practice or get tips or hints. Um, so I had posted when I was working on um, practicing with chalk pastels and I was only working with white paper and someone sent me uh, a message saying, if you're working with chalk pastels and if you want a cool winter effect, try using black paper. Um, so I thought that was a really cool message. Um, if you ever like have suggestions, like leave them in the comments below. Um, and it's beautiful when people can pass on knowledge because I think, you know, we don't, I don't know everything, right? So if someone says, try using black paper, yeah. I'm going to try it. Um, so I'm going to take my white pastel and I'm just going to cover this black paper in the white chalk pastel to see what happens. And again, I have never practiced, used, or just me one second, or worked with this black paper. So I feel like I'm really hyping up this experience and it's just going to be a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so pastel, black paper, white, here we go. <clears throat> oh, cool, all right. Oh, neat. So I'll give you a play-by-play -play while I'm doing this. So as I'm putting the pastel onto the black paper, um, it's actually picking up the texture from my table because this is not a smooth table as you can tell it's an art table there's tons of garbage on it or not garbage like paint um, <clears throat> that has spilled from previous canvases um, but there's definitely a texture to this table I'm working on 
and it's actually picking up like the textures. What's that called when you like, you know, rub on a stone to like pick up the design that was like on the stone? I think there's a name for that and I don't know where it is, but if you know the name, leave it in the comments. But I'm gonna just keep going. I'm just gonna fill this up. So what we're getting is that texture is being pulled from the table, so it's already creating this really cool texture. But the black is popping through the white, you know? So it's really giving the white is popping. So as for comparison, for comparative analysis, um, the previous picture we worked on was a white, white paper and I used white chalk pastel on it, but you can't really see the effect, so we added blue to sort of create and give density to that white tone. But with this, it's like you just put it on and boom. Hi, look at that. It looks like, the, like an aerial view of the moon, or perhaps the aerial, aerial view of a snowy ground. So, <clears throat> I do want to see if I can create a picture with this. So I'm just gonna keep filling this up. So again, now I'm gonna, finger time, I'm actually gonna give my fingers a wipe. And I'm gonna just blend this white into the black and see what happens. Oh, nice. See, the beautiful thing about chalk pastel is when you blend, it creates such a cool softness to this medium. So when you put pastel or when you put like pastel on, yeah, um, like it's got like a harder, like chalky, <laughs> chalky look because it's a chalk pastel. But when you blend it, it creates this really smooth and very, very, ah, oh, it's so beautiful. So let's just keep blending this. So if you do have black paper right now and you're following along, just blend. Just use those circular motions and just hit that paper. And look at it, oh my gosh. These are genuine, I'm having genuine reactions right now. This is genuine people, wow, this is awesome. Wow, that's so cool. <clears throat> okay, check it out. So now it's just really smoothed it out. Like there's just such a, wow, what a cool effect. I would say this picture is done because that looks really cool. Um, as an abstract, someone who works in abstract, right now I'm like, I'm, this is my vibe, so. But I do want to add more white. So I'm gonna try to create, do a, a little bit of um, a bit of a horizon line here, so. Similar to the last one, it's gonna be about almost halfway up. I don't wanna go all. And here we go, right on. So now this, I'm just using a lot of pressure. I'm currently using a lot of pastel. <laughs> like my white pastel is like almost gone, but I'm gonna keep blending this in. So it's really cool. You can like layer, it's like nice because you can layer your pastel on top of the other pastel. It's like kind of creates more density to the color, more opacity. Um, or not opacity, sorry, um, opaqueness, where it's like just a nice full flat color. So you can see just gonna you can follow along with all the steps. Wow, I'm like so into this effect right now. So cool. Yeah. So that looks great. So I've created my horizon line. So this is the sky. This is the horizon, or this is like the, the ground. Um, so for this, I wanted to try this. I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but. Um, Okay, I'm gonna use the dark brown. I think I wanna try to create like a road, like a road vibe. One of the things I'd worked on was actually, I'll show you, here we go. 
So this is what I had sort of worked on before. I thought this was like a cool, like very wintry, like I did this on white paper. And so I was originally gonna do this on white paper again for you, but I thought, oh, I'll try to translate this to the black. So this is kind of what we're going with right now. So that's the original picture that I worked on. And now I'm gonna see if I can create that with black, with the black paper. So let's see if this is what we got going on. <clears throat> So for that, we're gonna see if this works. So I wanna create a road. So a road going to the horizon line. Oh yeah, yeah, it picks up, cool. Nice. And then here, I wanna create just sort of a cluster of trees. So I'm gonna do, similar to the other trees before, like these lines to represent This is almost like a winter scene at night. It's giving me nighttime vibes. Oops. Just broke my pastel, that's okay. So again, this is like a bit of an experiment. You're on the road with me as I experiment with this. I'm gonna get a harder line here. So I've kind of created, you can kind of see this. So it kind of looks like doesn't look like much, but I'm gonna kind of blend it. I'm gonna try to blend it and see if I can create sort of like a tree or like a bushy vibe. Oh yeah, cool. So I'm gonna actually add more brown. If you want your trees to be a different color, go for it. If you want your trees to be like yellow or something, definitely. Sometimes it helps because chalk pastel, you get that sort of dust. So sometimes you have to blow it off. If you want, sometimes what I like to do is I like to tap that's sort of a neat effect when you work with pastels. Tapping can help blend it into the paper. Uh, so I'm just adding a bit of white around it. Just to add to it. So I'm just tapping and sort of giving short little white flecks of pastel. And that's just to create texture in the trees. So I find the trees are not popping as well as I want them in this, against the sky. So maybe... So I've just added a little bit more white sky more white pastel to the sky above the trees to sort of hopefully accentuate the trees. Oh yeah. That's the brown kind of comes up in it. Beautiful. So now I want to do the other side of the road. Uh, yeah, it's definitely giving me like nighttime, nighttime vibes. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit more white to my sky as I'm doing this. Doing the, using the white on the black, it almost, it's giving it like a snowstorm kind of vibe. Like it's giving it like, there's a lot of activity going on. Okay. Let's go, just adding more white. Now I wanna create, um, I'm gonna do like a power line. 
And that just sort of, because right now it's very abstract and you look at it and you're like, well, I think, I think it's a road. It's kind of giving me road vibes. But when I do this power line, it's sort of a very traditional, it's a signifier of like a country road. I find like, if you're ever looking at a landscape, think about like, I want to do a landscape of, or I want to do this, a picture of the beach, you know, just sort of think of things that are sort of traditionally like beachy, like you could do like an umbrella. And then people instantly sort of associate that with the beach. So for me, a country road, I think of power lines. So I'm going to do... So because there is perspective, this first power line is going to be bigger and a bit thicker. Again, it doesn't have to be, we're not looking for realism here. This is very abstract. And then I'm gonna do four of them. So the next one in this back is gonna be a little bit further, but it's gonna be thinner, slimmer. This one's a little shorter, a little slimmer, so it gives it the sense that it's off in the distance. And then my fourth one, it's gonna be here, it's gonna be even shorter. And then this one's gonna be even further. Beautiful, look at that. So this is really creating a sense of that perspective that I talked about before, which really helps sort of create a dynamic, it creates a dynamic picture and you can give a sense of that perspective. Uh, but so I've got these four power lines and now I want to add, so you can kind of see those power line vibes. You guys see that, right? One, I got four of them. Now I'm gonna do just like a little wire to connect them. So we're gonna go Just gonna connect these. Gonna add one just in the distance, just as it fades into the horizon. So now you can see I've created those power lines. So again, this is a very abstract picture, uh, but it's looking cool. So what I want to do, I think, is. I want to add just a bit more white to the sky to brighten it up. So play with play with the weight, with the pressure that you're putting on the pastel, because the heavier you press on the pastel, the more color you'll get from the pastel, and the more it will blend. And You can add hints of white here and there, and that just sort of creates that texture in the sky. So now I'm just sort of, just use your own perception. You use your own, your own skill as an artist and add like hints of white across the sky and this just gives a cool flow, a really cool like movement to the sky. Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh yeah, I like that, nice. So for this, I wanna add, I'm adding just a little bit of brown into the road, I wanna emphasize that roadiness. I 
find when you're working so minimally, like I'm just using brown and white, um, it's nice to be able to like have that play of the brown in other elements of the picture. So it kind of um, sort of ties the picture all together. Just put hints, just hints of the brown into the road. So the white is still the main, the main color here. And again, when you're doing pictures, I find when I'm doing sort of like landscapes, I try to m use my pastel or if I'm painting in the direction of what's actually happening. So with the road, for example, instead of going totally up and down, I'm sort of following the shape of the road with my pastel. So coming at it from a bit of an angle. Okay. So I like this. Okay. This is good. So this, you just witnessed me working on black paper with pastels for the very first time. Ooh, big day, big day. Um, so let's go back as we finish up here. Um, so that concludes my demo. So just sort of checking me out, working with some chalk pastels. Um, using white paper and for the very first time using black paper. So please forgive um, if you <laughs> just, that was my first time doing it, but I think it turned out good. So I just want to say thank you for um, tuning in. Thank you for following along. Um, let me just show you the finished product. So let me just flip this out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we did. So what we created was a day winter landscape. You can kind of see using the two colors, the three colors to create like a cool gradient winter sky, the trees with the snow on them to indicate that it's winter. And those blues really draw out the, the chilliness of the winter season. And then here is something really cool. Like, this is white chalk pastel on black paper. You can really see what a difference you can create. So same medium, only difference here is the paper. So the black paper really pops out and it ends up creating a really sort of darker, this is giving me like that moody winter night kind of vibe. So you can see that. So we'll, I'll post a couple of pictures on, um, on the Facebook or on Studio Central's Facebook. So you can check them out there. But I just want to say thank you again. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I know lockdown, a lot of uncertainty and it can be stressful. So I'm hoping that you can find uh, your own creative outlet, whether it's drawing, painting. Um, yesterday we did a photography walkabout um, whether you're cooking, whether you're exercising, going for a walk. Um, I think it's important to find um, these kinds of outlets to help center us um, so we can feel grounded um, amidst all of these, the, these sort of uh, different times. So I hope everyone is well. It's great to see everyone when you tune in. Um, we miss you. And we will hopefully see you soon again in person. Um, and yeah, tomorrow we're, we're back here at one o'clock. So please tune in tomorrow at one o'clock um, and we'll see you then. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.